everybody, welcome back to the Step Maths Oxbridge Academy channel and in today's video I'm going to be discussing the winner um, of our competition where you had a semicircle with three circles within it and um, the circles were kind of tangential to the semicircle and there were, well you were told that the small circles have a radius of one so what was the radius of the large circle or the semicircle so that was the question but before I go into um, the various answers that we received and who the winner is going to be um, I wanted to discuss a couple of things so first of all a lot of people are really quick to respond which I love as an entrepreneur I know the importance of taking quick action um, and it's a huge Thing in entrepreneurship start just go for it in math so i think you need to take a little bit more care so i noticed that a few of the answers that were given earlier on were a little bit more rushed than some people who took slightly longer so that's one thing to bear in mind um the other thing i wanted to say is um, about working now i know this is going to sound like quite a boring point but in maths working is important and th the very important point that i'm going to make now is justification if you've made any assumptions in order to do the question, you have to explain them. And you know, a lot of the people watching this video are gonna be mathematicians, computer scientists, physicists, engineers. You must, if you made an assumption, even if it's implicit and you don't even know you've made it, try and think, how do I know that what I did here was correct? And all of this will make sense when I discuss some of these solutions now. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go, go on my iPad now. You're gonna have a look at some of the solutions that were submitted, what I thought was good and could be improved about some of the solutions, and then I'm going to be announcing the winner. Hi everybody, okay, so um, here is the diagram. Now just to give you a hint, I tried to draw it loads of times by drawing the external semicircle first and drawing the internal circles, but it was a complete nightmare fitting them in. So then I resorted to drawing these first and drawing that afterwards. So that might be a good tip for you. So before I go into the answer, I just want to look at a couple of misconceptions. So we, we are told that the radius of the smaller circle is um, one. So let me just draw that one here as one. Um, and all three of the smaller circles are the same size. So what, the biggest misconception was, was drawing a circle like this. And saying, okay, well, I know this is one, 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 one. And therefore, this is square root of three plus three squared plus one squared. And therefore, this side, which is the radius of the big circle, would be 10. Now, we can see that the issue here is that when I zoom in, the thing that I labelled 1 was only meant to go up to here, whereas I assumed it went up to there, so that's where I went wrong. So root 10 isn't the answer in this case. Okay, so what else could you do? I think when I looked at this question myself, I kind of naturally was tending to look at radii like along here or along here. But try and see, is there another obvious place where we could put this radius? Well, okay, it turns out that if I try and put it through here, that might be a good idea because then I've got the radius that I'm trying to find and it also includes the radius that I already know, which in this case is one for this part here. So then all I need to do is draw a triangle here. I know this is one, this is two, and therefore this is root five. So the answer is going to be root five plus one, or well, the big radius is root five plus one. Now. That's all very well and good, but I've got a question. How did we know that if I drew a straight line which went between this center of the big circle and this center, that I was definitely going to end up at the point where the small circle is tangent to the big circle? So that, I think that was quite an assumption that I'd made, because suppose they actually touched here instead, then I would end up having two lines and my whole proof would have broken down because it's not no longer just one straight line anymore. Um, so it is the case that, that they touch here, that the line, if I extend it, touches here at the point where I want it to touch, but it just needs a little bit of justification. And I think the majority of students who entered the contest didn't put that justification in. So what kind of thing would you want to say here? Well, I'll let you have a look at it for a second and see if you can come up with a justification for that. Okay, well, let's see what we have. I know that these circles at this point 
are both tangent to each other. Well, what does that mean? That means that if I drew a tangent to the big circle, it would also be a tangent to the small circle. So the first thing I can write down is that it's always good to give these things a name when you're trying to um, describe them. Oops. So I could say that C1 and C2 share a common tangent at A. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, we know that uh, the radius of a circle is perpendicular to the tangent, which means that the small radius R is going to be perpendicular and go through point A, and the big radius big R is also going to be perpendicular to the tangent and go through this point. So what we can say is the, right, the radii of C1 and C2 that, that go through A, so this radius and this radius, have to be parallel because of the fact that they're both perpendicular to this line. And therefore, they will be collinear because they go through the same point. So that's enough information to say that is a straight line. And then the rest of my argument holds. And I can say that the radius is root 5 plus 1. So I just wanted to stress the importance of that small amount of justification because in exams such as STEP and MAT, this is the type of thing you will need to write down to get those extra one or two marks, which could be the difference between you getting an interview or you getting in or not. So I would say it's very, very important. And in multiple choice questions um, in the PAT or the TMUA, if you miss something like this, you might miss a key point, which means you picked the wrong option. So just try training your brain into thinking about what could go wrong. Where have I made an assumption? Um, and do I need to justify that in any way? All right, guys. So here is the winning solution. It's by Xenia. And here's why I like it. Okay, so I thought that her diagram was obviously very neat, but I don't think that's necessarily the be all and end all of a solution as long as it portrays all the key points. What I liked is that she had labeled all her points on here, which made it very easy when she described what she was doing later. And something that I really liked um, was that she treated these two radii as different lines, not assuming that they were collinear initially. And then she made her argument for why they must be collinear later on. So she says, according to the theorem that two lines Lines with a common point that are perpendicular to the same line must be congruent. We deduce that uh, A, sorry, OA, that one, oops, and O1A belong to the same line P, and that A1, O1, and AO are collinear. So she has now um, described why these are collinear, and only then does she go on to do her Pythagoras. Um, and get the correct answer of 1 plus root 5. So well done, Xenia. Really good solution, and it's very well laid out. The other thing I would say to people is, look, you can see here that she's used words, and using words is completely fine in any type of maths answer. In fact, it makes your solution a lot clearer. Um, I know that a lot of students kind of feel, oh, well, you don't need to write very much in maths, but actually, if you're trying to justify or prove something, then use words. By all means, use words, and you will get more marks if you make sure you hit all the key points. Um, so, yeah, Xenia, you have one, one, uh, 50 pounds off the Enger Platinum Bundle. We'll be in touch with you about that. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this competition and we'll be here with more problems soon. Just to add, this morning or yesterday, um, we sent an email asking if people wanted to review our book. And if that's something you'd like to do, if you'd like to receive a free copy of the book to review it, you can uh, write to us and describe in 100 words why you want to read our book. Um, so yeah, please do that by the end of the week. We're gonna be picking people to review our book then. Thank you so much for everyone who entered this competition. I hope you learned something from this video. See you again soon, take care.